it threw me off and I looked kind of like, is she flirting with me? And I don't know when I'll be back again. Kiss me and smile for me. Hello everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Traveling Gun. My name is Thomas, I'm a regional flight attendant. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe. To all my returning subscribers, thank you for the support, I do appreciate it. Today, I was supposed to do three legs, well, technically two. I was supposed to dead head to Greenville, South Carolina, then from Greenville to JFK, I mean LaGuardia, and then LaGuardia to Savannah, but a lot happened just on the dead head alone by itself. So this day has already gotten off to a weird start. But we're finna get ready and board because we landed a little bit late in LaGuardia and we're trying to get the flight out on time. And I'll explain to you all what happened once I get to Savannah. So I finally made it here to Savannah, but today didn't go without any hiccups or whatsoever. So as I told you all, it was a lot going on today. So I had a deadhead to Greenville today. That was That's what I was supposed to do. Sit in Greenville for about two hours, then go to LaGuardia, then LaGuardia to Savannah. So everybody knows me. If you've been watching this vlog long enough, you know on deadheads, I go to sleep. So as soon as I get on the plane, put my headphones on, head, you know, I had a window seat, so I laid my head up against the window and went to sleep. You know, kind of woke up because I heard the flight attendant running down the aisle. Because if you do this job long enough, you know what it sounds like when somebody's walking hard or she was running. So I kind of peeped and looked and she, I was on a, a Boeing 737-800 series. So I see her go up in the, uh, the open one of the bins where the emergency equipment was and she pulled out the defibrillator. And I'm like, what's going on? I'm sitting in 30, so I can't really see what's really going on up there. So I kind of kind of closed my eyes and go back to sleep again. And But I woke up, I was like, maybe they need my help. So I kind of perked up just to see what was going on and see if I, they needed my help. I couldn't see what was going on because I was so far back from it. But long story short, ended up being delayed because we had to go back to the gate. The door was already closed. And I go back to sleep again. And next thing I know, my flying partner comes to the back and she's waking me. She was like, hey, we got to go. We got another flight that we have to catch. So <laughs> crew scheduling calls me about 3.56 saying, hey, you're going to miss your connection. We're going to put you on a deadhead from Atlanta to LaGuardia. Mind you, we're in F. The flight from LaGuardia is in A and it leaves at 4.30. And it's all the way at the end of A and A2. Get to the gate. Can't find my record locator. Now I have called crew scheduling. I'm on hold with crew scheduling for like 10 minutes. And the lady like, listen, you about to get left. Um, so she need to close the door. Finally got that straight. Ended up getting to LaGuardia. Worked the flight from LaGuardia to Savannah. That was no problem. And um, I'm here, basically. But... Again, I still get paid for those two legs because we are pay protected, even though they took them away from us. I, I am still pay protected, so I still get paid for that. And that was my day one. I was supposed to work two legs. I ended up only working one. My flying partner said the person had a heart attack um, on the plane. So that's what actually happened. So because she was a little bit closer than me. So that's what happened. The person had a heart attack. Um, but other than that, I'm going to call it a night. I have to get up. I have to be, I have a uh, 11 o'clock showtime. So I'll see you guys a little bit later on.
Good morning, everybody. Today is day two, and hopefully today is a lot smoother than yesterday. Granted, it didn't bother me at all that all I did was just change planes and uh, change deadheads, and they took away a leg, and I still got paid for it. But hopefully, it goes a lot smoother. I have three legs today. I go from Savannah to JFK, JFK to Minneapolis, and Minneapolis to Savannah. I mean, not Savannah, I'm in Savannah, Cincinnati. <laughs> and then I'm done today around like seven ish, I think. But uh, also, I want to say, I want to say Happy Founders Day to the brothers of Alpha Phi Alpha. Uh, Fly with the guy is an Alpha. I am Glenn Wynn is Alpha. You can find them on YouTube. Also, one of my subscribers, uh, Be Real JB, he's also an Alpha. My father is an Alpha. So I want to say Happy Founders Day to you all. The Ice Cold Brothers are A Phi A. But other than that, I don't have any new updates for you all. Um, I will soon, hopefully, and. I'm going to get ready to pack up the rest of this room and get ready for the day to get started. And I'll see you guys a little bit later on once I get to Cincinnati. Hello, everybody. So I finally made it here to Cincinnati. I think I lied to y'all earlier and said I was supposed to be here like at 7. That was what time I left Minneapolis. I ended up got, I'm here at... 11:21. So I started my day. I had to report by 12:20. So today was almost a 12-hour duty day. I do have a 13-hour layover here. Um, today did seem kind of long, just because the flight from JFK to Minneapolis was three and a half hours, and then we had a two and a half hour sit on top of that, and then coming to here. So you know, but the flight was very uneventful. Nothing happened. Um, everybody was pretty much smooth. Uh, Nothing. Oh yeah, I forgot the most important birthday today. I know I shouted out Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Inc. Today is my granny's birthday. She turned 79, I think, 76, 79, somewhere like that. Don't don't judge me, but it was it's her birthday today um, as well. I forgot about it this morning when I was talking to you earlier, but I'm a little bit tired. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the bed and then I'm gonna get ready and lay down and call it a night and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to day three. I'm here in Cincinnati. Uh, it's a little gloomy, and uh, I have two legs today. I go from Cincinnati to Newark, Newark to Raleigh. This morning, I got up early to do some work. Uh, my daughter, who's going to high school next year, she said that she wants to pursue theater. And um, I wanted her to come back to Georgia to go to school because my high school is a performing arts school, and that I went to, I should say. Was a, is a performing arts school. And I know a lot of people who came through that are on Broadway, that have been in movies, that um, are writing their own plays for Broadway right now. But she chose, she wanted to stay in Alabama. So the next best thing is the Alabama School of Fine Arts, which is right there in Birmingham. And they have a, a lengthy application process to where, you know, the parents have to fill out a survey as in why you want your child to attend this school. And of course, I'm the one doing it because I'm a little bit better at putting pen to pad as far as words on paper. And she has to come up with a monologue and I'm trying to give her ideas for monologues and show her how a monologue actually is supposed to go. And, um, you know, it's crazy that I tell people, you know, that as parents, it's our job to open our children's minds and, you know, to expose them to, to things that can tap into their creativity. Now, if I would have told my stepdad that's what I wanted to do at 14, he would have told me, nah, you ain't even to do that. Because even when I was getting ready for college and I wanted to major in counseling, he was telling me, nah, don't do that, major in business or something like that. And I told him I didn't want to do that. He told me not to go to college out of state. I went out to school out of state. So <clears throat> I know what it's like not to have that support. My mom, I don't, she didn't really want me to go to school, but out of state, but that was just because she wanted me to stay closer to home. But I understand it's, it's just one of those things, like if you don't have kids, always try to support your kids' dreams or try to open their mind to different things. And the creativity of a child's mind is can be endless if you just tap into it and expose them to different things. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, the granted, the school is free, it's tuition free. Even if it wasn't, I'd go get a second job or something like that just so I can help her pursue her dreams because too many of us in a generation have put off our dreams what we really wanted to do because we went to school or did something that was quote unquote safe and tried to pursue the dream later on down in life. Now, granted, I told her to have a backup plan just in case. 
you know, so you can have something to fall back on because it might not pop off like the way you think it's going to pop off. And she wants to go to NYU really, really bad. <clears throat> Why NYU? I don't know. But hopefully, you know, once everything is settled down with all this that's going around in the world, I can try to take her to a few college visits like NYU, Wright State, because I know a lot of people from my school went to Wright State that were in theater. Also, USC, just to kind of get her um, mind to tick in, you know, like to have a backup plan besides NYU. But the school itself is great, 100% graduation rate. A lot of people get scholarships to different uh, film, theater schools. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to do it, whatever. Whatever my children want to do, I'm going to support it 100%, whether I feel like it's not going to, you know, it's not something quote unquote safe or sound, which I don't even feel that way because I feel like if it's your passion, you're going to put 100% into that passion. And I think going to the school will open up her mind a little bit more than going to a traditional high school, which, dang, thank you. I could put that in a little essay because that was one of the questions. Um, <clears throat> so sorry that this is long, but I just wanted to, I felt like I should share that, especially with people who are parents. And if you're not a parent yet and you want to become a parent, it's best to support your kids' dreams. Try to expose them to a lot of things early on, and that way it can kind of open their mind and can tap into that creative, you know, space in their head to see what they really want to do in life. And she wants to do theater. She wants to be on Broadway. I'm glad that they're, you know, pursuing, they want to pursue their dreams. But um, other than that, sorry about that was long, but I just felt like I should share that with you all. Um, but other than that, I'm finna get ready and go down to this van. I have a 12.05 report. So we have to leave third of the van leaves every, on the 30 minute mark and we're 15 minutes away from the airport. So I have to leave at 11.30 and I'll see you guys a little bit later on once I get to run. <laughs> Hello, so I made it here to Raleigh. Very easy, short day. Just seemed like I was just here last week, which I think I was twice actually. Um, today was very uneventful. Nothing happened besides, obviously, Newark only has one runway. We was in line to ta take off number one. Tower says, nope, they moved us off the runway to let other people go before us. So we ended up taxing for about 45 minutes before we were able to leave. And we landed about 30 minutes late here in Raleigh. But other than, you know, that's Newark for you. But other than that, that's all I have for you. I'm going to um, finish doing some work with the application process for my daughter. And I'll talk to you guys tomorrow for Go Good Home Good morning, day. everybody. Welcome back to day four. It is Go Home Day. Uh, today, I just have two legs. Go from Raleigh to LaGuardia, LaGuardia to Norfolk. And then I did head from Norfolk back to Atlanta. It's supposed to be done by three. Hopefully, no delays. But you know it's LaGuardia. And it's going to be what it is going to be. Uh, but uh, today, I'm just ready to go home. You know, nothing was wrong with this four-day trip. It's pretty much been very uneventful. Like we like our, all our trips and it's just a just want to be at home mostly you know and uh you know just kind of excited about this next chapter into my oldest daughter's life as far as getting her to perform in art school making sure i do my part and try to help her succeed the best way possible for her future and things like that so you know i'm a little bit excited about that you know and go over everything with her and try to help her out as much as possible as i can with everything i guess um but other than that that's all i have for you today after this trip this four day the next two trips is gonna well the next three trips are gonna be like work like they probably i'll probably be delirious tired all the above so bear with me i do appreciate you all but i'll keep you all updated if anything happens between now and by the time i close out this video I'll make sure i keep you updated and i'll see you guys a little bit later on once i close out the video <laughs> Hello everybody, so I finally made it home, end of this four day. I'm off for a few days. Um, something did happen on the flight. So on our flight from Raleigh to New York, I had a meet and assist, which nine times out of 10 is somebody that has a hard time seeing or they can't see. And so I think in this case, she couldn't see at all. So I helped her back to her seat. She was sitting back there in the um, back in 19 near me. And as I was doing service and everything like that, I was coming back through tr for trash and she asked me she said hey is it too late to get any coffee and i said no i said would you like your coffee black she goes 
<laughs> that's how I like my men, but I'll take cream in my coffee. And it, it threw me off and I looked kind of like, is she flirting with me? Yeah. So get her a coffee, put some cream in her coffee, go back to give her the coffee. So she grabs my hand. But so I took that as she's just trying to find where the cup is. But when she got the cup, she touched my hand and then started going like this. And then she kind of leaned back and go, mm, and just smiled. And I was like, oh my goodness. She's, yeah, she really is flirting with me. And as we were deplaning, she was asking me, was I from New York? Because she was going to be in New York for two weeks because she's training on her service animal. And um, I think if I would have said, yeah, I live in New York, nine times out of 10, she probably would have been like, hey, let's have dinner or something. And it's, I don't know, what would y'all have done in that situation? Uh, to me, it's just flattering and it just kind of made me just smile a little bit or whatever like that. But I mean, like I know when, I know when somebody is flirting with me, like even flying partners float with me, but I don't, I pretend as if I don't know and don't pay any attention whatsoever, but definitely that was a big flirt right there. But other than that, that's all that happened today. And, but I'm going to close out this video as always, hug on the ones that you love, tell the ones that you love, that you love them. I'm out.